Hey guys and welcome back to another tutorial. In today's lesson we're just going to finish up our SQL series basically, our playlist. There's only three videos, um, no one was really interested in that all that much. So just for completion's sake I'm going to finish up this login form that I've created for my own project. I'm not going to be covering how I made this GUI or anything, um, nor am I going to provide project resources because obviously this is my own project. I don't have internet either so I'm not too sure how long it's going to take to, uh, to get this video up onto YouTube but hopefully it doesn't take too long. Um, so I've created a simple login page just a username and password. I've added a not register button so you can register. Uh, if you click back it goes back to this. I've added an on-screen keyboard as well in case you're using a tablet and then we have a login button on the side over here. Now if you guys ask me questions like how do you make this login button, how do you make this UI, I am not going to reply because I have like 50 videos and in every single one of them I show you guys how to make some sort of GUI or some elements or something so I'm not going to be uh, you know commenting on any of those comments or asking questions like that so uh, if you remember last time we created a uh, register page which I don't have open at the moment but uh, we're just going to be working on our DB class now if you remember last time we created a, a class called DB class which then we added this code to write to a database. Now we're going to add code to actually check a login. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to create a public void, uh, not void actually, we're going to go with public boolean. Um, and then let's name it check um, check login. I think that should be fine. Now we're going to return. If I can spell, how do I spell return? Okay, so in this uh, in these brackets for our parameters section of this method we're going to create two parameters one is for the username so string username and then the next one will be for string password so username and password now obviously we're accessing this from a different GUI which is this one so when you click on the login button it's going to take in these two parameters which will be the username dot get text and then the password dot get text and then it'll use it in our DB class for these two values here now we're going to create a boolean value. We're going to call this boolean check, and we're going to make that equal to false. Then we're going to uh, we're going to return that variable called check. So what this check variable does is that it's uh, by default false. So if it doesn't find anything, it'll return false. If it does, we'll make a little if statement to change um, the value of check to be true. Then it'll return true, and then we can create a simple if statement in our login um, saying if uh, check login is equal to true then log the person in so after this we're going to copy and paste the code to actually connect to the database which is this try and catch right here so I'm not going to retype it because what's the point when we can just copy and paste it so that's about it now we just got to add a few more lines of code we're going to create a statement so statement sta is equal to con dot create statement now con is very uh, basically a variable that I created right on top here called connection con and I just reuse it everywhere you guys can see where it's highlighting and including here as well so statement sta equals to con dot create statement that's basically creating a statement that we can execute using our SQL uh, command so the next thing we're going to be doing is creating an SQL statement so string SQL is equal to a blank string for now we'll get back to that then we're going to create a result result set rs is equal to sta dot execute query and then in the brackets you put in your sql statement which in this case is sql then we just got to add our import for that so click this bulb and then add it there we go um, now what a result set does it basically creates a set of results um, if it finds anything so if it finds a result that matches your query which is what's going to be typed in the string sql line right here then it'll create a set of results now it creates a set because sometimes you can return multiple results obviously but because we are just going to be create uh, you know getting one um, one uh, one result back from our database because remember the username is a primary key so we cannot have both the same username so if the username is uh, John then the password will match with that username so if those two match then it'll log you in if not it, it won't create any results which then will be uh, check will be false and then you'll return false and then you can create an if statement in your login GUI which says um, if it's false it cannot log you in 
So let's create a while loop because some maybe one of you guys have multiple results. Um, obviously, in my case, because we have a username uh, as a primary key, you can only have one result. So while rs dot next. So it's basically going to create a while loop that runs forever until it runs out of stuff to display, which in our case is only going to be one one result. So while this uh, while it found something, if it does find something, it'll go into this two brackets, okay? And then in these two brackets, we're just going to simply say check equals true. So if you find something, check is equal to true, which basically means that your SQL statement was true or it matches the one in the database, and then it returns true at the bottom. Now, if if nothing is found, it basically won't run whatever's in here, and then it'll be false. So if check equals equals false, so we're checking if um, check, the variable check is equal to false. If it is false, let's just output something like uh, login is not correct. Okay, and that's it. That's all you need. And then obviously your SQL statement. So we're going to say select, uh, let's just go with select all because who really cares just in case. Select all from, then the table name, which in my case is called table profile. Uh, select all from table profile where username, which is basically a field in my database, which is called the username. Uh, if you guys want me to open that, let me just open it up just to show you guys. Uh, okay, so this is a database. You guys can see we have the primary key on the username. So you can only have um, a username that's only repeated once, basically. And then we have the password, which is called password, the field is password, and the, the username field is called username. So, so select all from table where username is equal to this username on the top here. So let's just copy that. Now this gets a little bit complicated. You have to put in a single semicolon, then a double, then you put in a plus, insert that, then you put in a another plus, then I think it's a double single. Yeah. Okay, so select all from table profile where username is equal to username and password is equal to one colon, two colon, plus password, which is the variable name in our parameter section, plus one, two, no, plus two, one, two, there you go. So when I say two, one, two, I mean that one, then that one there has one, then that one there has two, those quotes. Okay, so we're basically saying, uh, string SQL is select all from table profile where the username is equal to whatever the guy typed in in the field and password is equal to whatever you typed in the password field. So that's it. Let's just go to our login GUI. Uh, right click on your button or your label or whatever you're using. Go on to mouse, mouse released. And now we're going to create a object of the class which is DB class. So we're going to say DB class DB is equal to new DB class there you go and we're simply going to say db dot uh, check login so in the username field we're just going to say username dot get text okay and that's pretty much done for the username field so the password's a little bit more complicated if you guys are wondering where i got this username from it's the variable name for the username text field and then the password text field is called password so the next one is um, password.getText. However, password.getText is uh, deprecated or whatever, so they suggest to not use that. Instead, you have to use password.getPassword, which returns char. So we have to convert it to a string. So we're going to say string pass is equal to new string, and then in the brackets, we're going to say password, which is a variable name for our password field, dot get password. You guys can see dot get text has a line through it. It's deprecated as of Java 2. So version 1.2, I think we're using version 1.8, um, 1.7 for this tutorial. So dot get password. This is also how you can convert something to a string. So we're just going to replace this null with the pass. So let's run a program. Now, because the username and password is false, it doesn't match. It should give us an error at the bottom saying login is not correct. However, if it is correct, it won't say anything. And the password is hello. You guys can see it doesn't display anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an if statement. And we're just going to copy that uh, that whole line into an if statement because remember we're returning a boolean. So if it's true, so we can just put in equals equals true. 
or you can leave it blank it doesn't really matter it means the same thing then s out login is correct okay um, oh I forgot there you go now if we run this if the password is not correct it'll say no class okay so uh, it had some weird error there I'm not too sure it didn't compile properly or something but it says login is not correct so if we type in the correct values now and then hello for the password you guys will see it says login is correct now if the login is correct you guys can do whatever you want in this if statement like open up a new GUI show a display message uh, output it to the window if you want whatever you want to do so that's it for this tutorial we just covered how to create a simple login page using a Microsoft Access database now obviously if this gets some likes and comments and stuff um, at least like 15 likes or whatever then I'll make another uh, series with a MySQL online database so you don't have to use uh, a database that's actually in your project resource you can use a database that's hosted on a website if you guys want I can even show you how to create your own host uh, your own network connection and everything so you can be your own host um, which is what I'm doing for this project so I'm not going to be using this code right here but uh, yeah, that's it for this tutorial. If you guys did like it, please don't forget to leave us a like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have any suggestions, just leave them in the comment section below because I'm going to try to get out as many videos as possible, at least one a day for the next week or maybe next three or four days. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching guys.